Hi, I'm Stephen Beattie, and you're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Welcome back to Irish Football Fan TV. Today I'm here with Cork City's Stephen Beattie. First of all, Stephen, thanks very much for coming on. No problem, no problem. And uh, yeah, um, how do you feel? Uh, the season has gone now, you're after winning the league and the cup against Dundalk of all teams. <laughs> yeah, brilliant, yeah, we scored uh, the final league getting over on them. Uh, three years in a row, second in the league. A bit harsh, you know, but Dundalk were a fantastic team. We were fed up playing the Bridesmaids, beat us in two cup finals. So I think the first the first cup final we won last year, I think that was probably the most important because if we hadn't won that going into a league, the lose again the dog would have been very tough and I don't think we would have done what we've done to it this year. So uh look the dog set the bar. I can't speak any more highly about them. Like it's a healthy rivalry. Fantastic players. They lost a few players that are still up there, so I think just what over them is brilliant and hopefully next year we'll do the same. Okay. Yeah, we have a few questions obviously from the fans. Um well, there's a League Royal group chat who always asked me to give them a shout out, so there is our lads. Um, <laughs> <laughs> if you that's the thing, we'll get, get you into it. Uh, but uh, the first um, question, anyway, is it's from the FAO Ireland underscore fans. Um, are you looking forward to playing the Champions League qualifying rounds and how far do you think Cork C can go in Europe? Hashtag ask beats. Yeah, really looking forward to that. I mean, for any player, especially in Ireland, it's going to be the pinnacle of my career, I believe. Um, think about the Premiership players in England that will never get a chance to play in the Champions League, never won the qualifiers, right? You know, so we got a taste for Europa League the last two years. Just to hear that music turn us across, be something special. But regardless of how far we can go, you have to dream big and aim big. You know, you can't just hope to win a, a round or two rounds. You know, obviously you want would, to qualify. Would you take? Would you take inspiration now from what Dundalk have done? Hundred percent. Uh, last last oh, season, as that, you know. Yeah, and as I said at the very start, they set the bar. League and Europe, it can be done. You know what I mean? Um, the year they won the double, they went on and went that run in Europe. So look, why not? And to be honest with you, I take Europe League group stages now. If you, if you ask me, like that would be unbelievable to play in. And as I said, the block at that, and it's a realistic Terry. Yeah. Hope you're happy with that answer, guys. I know I am. Um, Ian Fitzpatrick sent us a private message, and he said, "Hi guys, I have a couple of questions I would like to ask Beats, uh, as I'm such a massive fan of his, and also he's a role model of mine." Uh, could you guys ask him what advice would you give to young guys who want to make it at a high level? I'll just go with that one and then yeah. that's it. Now. It's hard work and determination. I mean, if you ask any manager who play, but majority of players, probably most players, they say how hard worker I am. Like you know, first in training and last to leave, um, and you have to keep at it. Like got a couple of bad injuries and we could have thrown in the tail, but but kept going and, and persevered with it. You know, had me goals, had me dreams, and I think I wouldn't be where I am if I didn't have that attitude. You know, um. So just work hard as hard as you can, you know. No one can ever work you. You're gonna do well, you know. I played last so many lads that are more talented than me, but you struggle to find as much hard work, you know. So I think that's how we still play, and that's how we we'll always play. Would you agree with that term that hard work beats talent? That doesn't work out. Well, no. If you're not talented enough, you won't go there. You know what I mean? I just I was a mediocre player. I probably said I'm a mediocre player to some people, but the hard work like that will get me over the line at some stages, but. Like, look, I don't want to bring Shawnee into it early, but look at Shawnee McGuire, that's just talent there. But well, he has my attitude as well, hard work, and I believe that's why he's gone to a higher level. But no, I think talent would, would be hard work, but if you want to go to that level, but regardless of where I'm at at the moment, I think a lot of hard work will. Yeah, okay. Um, what advice would you give the. Uh, uh, what are some of the lessons you've learned on your journey? That was the other question. Yeah, you're gonna get you're gonna get rejection. You're gonna get disappointments. You're gonna get heartbreak. I mean, that that's part part and parcel. You know what I mean? And um, there's a cup finals in the Aviva. to come in second in the leagues. The manager's telling you're not good enough. You know, injuries. It's all part. And how, how how would you take if if a manager tells you not good enough? What? Years of motivation, in the long run, which I've done. You're too small. You're this even fifteen, sixteen. If you know the academy, you said you're too small. You won't make it, blah, blah. I'm probably still the same height than I was at 16, but as I said, that attitude was into it then, you know. But I use all that to all the negative stuff to turn into positive. That's how I've always been. Probably. Um, that's brilliant. Uh, Jerry Kelleher says, and he's from Cork, man himself. Um, be careful here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's nothing bad. Um, would you ever be tempted to go back and play in North America again? Hashtag Aspeed. I would, yeah, eventually, yeah. Um, I think a lot of people know that. Um, I had two offers there at the start of this year and just wasn't right, it's not the right time for me with the Champions League next year and what's going on down in Cork, you know. Um, it's very, very, very hard to leave the set up down there and, and the players we have in the dressing room and Caulfield, like you're going very well with him, so 
not a long term yeah, defence you want to go back over but where I play finish every playing career here and go into a coaching capacity that might be the option I go and do my badge at the moment so yeah I'd eventually want to go back over there but at the same time I'm not going to leave something so good down court absolutely especially since it's building now absolutely um, Pat Kiernan says who do you think is the most underrated player at City hashtag at speed? most underrated player girl Marcy uh, the work rate he goes through is something special like box to box breaking things up and um, he doesn't get the credit he deserves he's probably after Shawnee left he's probably arguably our best player in my opinion and again he doesn't get the plot it's, but he'd probably be up there yeah. and Stephen Dooley who we lost uh, went to the side of the rain but Dooley was an exceptional player like on the same train he's quick feet he's frightening so it's just one of those things I, I, I was saying there recently enough um, that it's something that with Dinny I was saying with Dinny Corker that it's some things that fans don't notice that players will notice Yeah. to the untrained or like yeah. there's things that you pick up on that fans wouldn't who haven't been coached in similar ways to see the, the specific jobs that managers have asked them you know exactly and look, look at Conor McCormick what you get out of him in the six like, that's his job and he does it to perfection so if yeah. you understand it you'll see it but Nagaro would be Fit that mold, just phenomenal. Um, Kean Darcy says, um, "What was the best piece of advice you got off any manager that coached you?" Hashtag Good question. We we'll never give up. I mean, that's been instilled in me from a, a young age. Um, Jesus, all the way back when I was with Shells underage. If that was the mentality I was given, you can probably tell I still have that. So that's probably it. Yeah. yeah. Um, I just wanted to ask you personally, yes. what what was it like? You know, you've been playing so many different countries. Um, how did you take to Iceland? And well, what, what what was what was the motive behind that? It was my first move after the cruise ship. Um, John Caulfield was on to me. This was Jesus, five or six years ago, and uh, I personally I didn't think I was good enough to come back to the league. I wanted to do myself justice. I wasn't fit. I was still trying to get back from injury, and I think if I came back at that time and played. I wouldn't have done myself any favours. So I said, look, I go somewhere different and what a chance to visit Iceland and play football. And I was a developing country soccer wise at the time, so I think it would end up in the long run being a good move, but it took a lot of getting used to it. What was the lifestyle like? Uh, quite enough. I mean, I was two hours from Reykjavik and uh, there was only about 1,500 in the town, you know. So uh, no, it took a bit of getting used to it, but they, they treated me well once we were already in football, you know what I mean? And I kept working on me rehab me knee over there, so. As I said, it worked out. So anyway, more about uh, North America. How, how was how was it? I loved it. Over there in college, left left home when I was eighteen, not even took university. Didn't really know much about it. Going over, kind of went over with an empty or a, a clean slate. Said, look, give it a go, something different. And uh, I loved every bit of it. I done well over there. Met some great friends and ended up getting drafted then up to Toronto. So that was another great experience. And then put along to Puerto Rico. So I've <laughs> just been all over, but. The experiences over there are, are brilliant, you know. And as I said earlier, like that's why Messi settled over there, just because I know what's over there and the chances lads have. And would you still keep in contact with people over there? Yeah, a lot, yeah. As I said, I was over there three weeks ago and uh, met up the old college mates and stuff and a couple of my old coaches brought them over for dinner and they're delighted. They're following the league hardly crazy now. Uh, just because I'm in it and they can see what, where I've come from to now, so. No, I'll be they'll be watching this now. Yeah, they'll definitely be watching I'll this. Give them a shout out. Yeah, 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 <laughs> No, we coached in AKU, uh, John Basilegi, he was pretty brilliant to me, he was like a father figure, went over there and he came over and watched uh, our last game against Dundalk in July or August, so it was great for him to see, he's the Patronus cross packed and he was getting a win, so uh, happy days. Now, um, of all the places and countries you live, you must have been in America that obviously you felt like yeah, you enjoyed the experience the most? Yeah, yeah, just... You know, the size of the country, like, you know, if you want the, the warm weather, you can go to Florida, you want to go skiing, the cold, you to Colorado, you know. Yeah. So it's just the, the opportunity there more than anything, you know what I mean? Like, I've seen it, for, I've seen it firsthand, and I think I'll offer a lot, as they'll offer me a lot, you know, me coaching by this now and, and my football CV. And the, the football over there is on the rise now as well, especially on the coaching team. Yeah, it's definitely on the rise, yeah. I mean, Beckham obviously triggered it, went over, and Robbie Keane was unbelievable over there, you know. So, uh I think there's there's massive opportunities, especially transitioning to culture side of it to Yeah, totally. To expand my career so as I say. Yeah. Um, now the, the last of the pretty much the fine questions. Um John Jonathan Higgins, uh, at J, J Higgins three on Twitter says Stephen Beatty, tell us something about you that no one else knows apart from you wearing 
I call final suit to everybody. <laughs> Hashtag ass beats. <laughs> well, you got me there. Now, uh, when I've done my crew shit, not many people know how quick it happened. I, as I said, signed for Toronto, put out an all in Puerto Rico. And I officially signed to Puerto Rico on the Monday and done my crew shit on the Wednesday. So it was probably the quickest pro career someone's ever had, two days or something, two and a half days. But I mean, I went from the highest height to the lowest low, so you know, I've experienced a lot. And I think when I do with coaching, it's something that will stand to me that if any kids go through serious injuries, like you know, we can bounce back and stay mentally strong. How, how long were you for? Uh, 11 months. Yeah, yeah. It was a long one, like, yeah, full rupture of the ACL and grade two of my PCL. So it was a pretty bad one. And were you out there by yourself? I was out there by myself. The team left from North Carolina for pre season. I had to stay behind in the hospital, me and a physio, Spanish speaking, very toughly. Yeah. So I ended up flying back to the States then and I came back then and got my surgery in Dublin with uh, Ray Moore. So. Touch wood, I've had no big injuries since and hopefully keep that way till we finish playing. Long may it last. Touch wood, yeah. Um, Kieran Sadler says, <laughs> when, when's he getting a new pair of trainers? Sad's definitely, Sad's miss has helped him like that, I can guarantee it, because he doesn't have that sort of band in the locker. <laughs> and the last used to give you a bit of stick with the same runners every time. So I doubt the other day I bought the same, exact same pair, just said look a bit newer. But uh, fair play to Sad's as misses for helping me out there. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alright, and we tweeted uh, Sean McGuire and um, Asked me any questions for you, um, and he replied, and he said, "Ask him has he taken off his suit from the cup final yet? Every snapshot at a wedding, he seems to be wearing the same one." That's decent. And, uh, eyeballs and yeah. emoji. Yeah, that's decent man from Sean. He's from a side back from Cork. He actually had the same banter. He said, "I hope you get a new wardrobe." So obviously that's just his poor banter. But we'll have a chat about Sean in the last couple of minutes, and we'll give you a few stories about him. And um, yeah, I just wanted to say, you, you know, you you'd said. Obviously, you've had your heartache with injuries now. Would you be Would you be on the phone to him helping him out now? Yeah, he rang me the, the night he got the news. He was doing for a scan and obviously he found out. He rang me and obviously he was devastated. You know, he was made his debut for Ireland a couple of weeks before. So, like, he could relate to what I kind of been through. You know, obviously he's at a level now where I wasn't at, but regards to the mental side of it, he's still only young. He's got loads of time in his hands and he's dealing with a great to be fair. And I'm going over there tomorrow actually for a couple of days and just. It's just a normal lad like myself that, that's gone through a bad time at the moment, but the way he thinks he's, he's very, very strong mentally, so he'll be back. And he has a missus over there with him too? Uh, yeah, she, she's from Cork, but she's over there a good bit, yeah, I think uh, he's a bit whipped in that apparently as well, so that, <laughs> that, 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 helps, him, that helps him keep going, but uh, Claudia's great, you know, as a, you know, she's a good singer. Fantastic. Check her out on YouTube, get her subscribed, so I won't subscribe back, Claudia. Claudia Rose Long. Uh, She's Check actually, her out. She's actually more famous than Shawnee, and uh, <laughs> that's part of my story, so I'm running for you, Polly. <laughs> well, we might as well get to the story, because right. we, we've finished up on the questions now from the fans, so right. the floor is yours. Right, well, it happened was, so before Shawnee made it famous, famous, he thinks he's massive now, you know what I mean? Okay. So this will bring back down to earth. Uh, he was doing well for Cork, to be fair. He was banging in the goals, and he was walking down Cork Main Street with Claudia hand in hand, you know what I mean? So this young fit comes up and goes, ah, oh, can I have a picture, you know? Sean's like, yeah, no bother, starts fixing here. Who are you? Well, Claudia. Sean has to take the phone and take the picture for him. Right, <laughs> right red. Claudia's looking at him and goes, I'm more famous than you. So they have a little argument now, right? Who's more famous? And Claudia is by an absolute country boy. Who's got, who's got the more followers? <laughs> Before Sean went to England, he had only two or three thousand. Obviously, now he's 17 or 18, but Claudia had. But I think, honestly, Claudia's more recognised around Cork than Sean. Because she, she was on The Voice as well. She was on The Voice, yeah. Um, Obviously, Sean, he's punching a bit as well, so we'll get that <laughs> in as well. You just thought you'd just ripped the shreds. Uh, you? Look, you have to bring him back down to earth somehow. I think he's probably going to get back to you on Twitter or something over this. He's probably, probably knocked me out tomorrow when he wrote him. Absolutely. Well, um, that's everything in terms of the questions. Uh, I just want to say thanks very much for coming on. Uh, it's been an absolute great laugh and a pleasure. Um, have a safe flight tomorrow. Hopefully, you don't get an old punch up with uh, Sean and Gore. No, we should be all right. Um, well, Claudia could just be the referee yeah, if, she, yeah, if she's yeah, there, you know. Yeah. She'd probably be giving you a high five, but he'd be going. I should be buzzing off this, trust me. Yeah. Um, well, that's it in terms of this video, guys. Uh, we got to 1k subscribers, so thank you all for that. Um, don't forget to check out our Christmas giveaway on Facebook. It is there. Uh, there's three prizes to win. Uh, get your likes and shares in before the 23rd to be able to chance. And uh, yeah, if you like this video, give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to click the subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching Irish Football Fan TV. Have a great day.